sad news. Diane Feinstein has passed away. She was 92. You made some news last night. Uh, you said you'd nominate a black woman to, vi uh, to fill Senator Dianne Feinstein's seat if she were to re retire from the Senate ahead of schedule, ahead of the end of her term. Uh, you now say Feinstein should stay in the Senate. Today, Feinstein said she has no plans to leave. So given yeah. that, why did you tell MSNBC that you had multiple names in mind to, to fill the seat, given the fact that she doesn't plan on, on well, leaving that seat? Uh, Jake, I did something that in politics everyone wants you to do, but you're not supposed to do, and that's I do. He ain't doing nothing. <laughs> Look at your state. This guy, this guy just cracks me up. It's pathetic. Directly answered a question. <laughs> it was a yes, no question at the end of a segment. And the question was, if she resigned, would you commit? And I said, if, yes, uh, I would. And so that led to this. Now, if I was given a little bit more time and Maybe I'll take and she shouldn't have been in the office. Everybody was having to make decisions for her. There should that's a I think it's a crime. It's a crime. It is a crime that they had her stay in stay in office and she she wasn't even there, right? Mentally. Take advantage of it here. I would make this point. I if anyone knows California politics, they know the relationship uh, that I have with... Oh, we know your California politics, buddy. We know. Senator Feinstein, going back to when I was a young child growing up in San Francisco, oh uh, she was an extraordinary mayor, extraordinary California, San, uh, San Francisco supervisor. And so she influenced him? I mean, I don't, you don't want to talk ill about the dead, but for Pete's sake, she influenced him? And look what he's done to his state. She's been a mentor of mine, not just a friend. And I say that, and you know when politicians talk about friends, you roll your eyes. She's a friend. Friends. Talk about friends. And, oh, look, I'm just... She was my friend. I have enormous respect for her. She's not going anywhere. I talk to her all the time. Uh, but in the context of that uh, question about a hypothetical... And he was talking to her all the time, like, hey, I need you to vote this way. We'll have somebody come sit beside you and then you write it down. Sign your name. Um, yeah, I answered it, and I stick by my answer, but I have all the confidence in the world. I'll never have to make that decision. Two years later. We had hundreds of people join the USCC. Next news alert and sad news. Uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein of California has passed away. The U.S. Senator was 90 years old. She was elected as the first female to ever serve as a senator in the state of California back in 1992, nearly 30 years ago. All right. All right. There you go. 30 years. 30 years in office. 30 years. Why, 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 why do we have career politicians like this? It's just, it's sad. And we continue to follow the breaking news, the death of Senator Dianne Feinstein at the age of 90 years old, learning that news uh, within just the past hour. She was a centrist Democrat, uh, one of uh, the longest serving female senator. Uh, great loss for the nation as well, of course, for the state of California. Why is this a great loss? I mean, I'm sorry for her and her family that she's passed away, but how in the world is it a great loss to this nation? All right, we got Chuck U. Schumer. Let's see what Chuck U. Schumer is going to say about Feinstein. Madam President, first woman president pro tem of the United States. Oh, and good Lord, look at this guy. He has made a career out of being a politician as well. We do need to have uh, term limits. We really do. I mean, Benjamin Franklin said that um, you shouldn't make a career out of being in politics because you lose touch. You lose touch with, with the common people. What did Bill Clinton say? Feel their pain, which he, you know, he rode that line. But really, you need to be in touch with the private sector. You need it. State Senate. Earlier this morning, we lost a giant in the Senate. Senator Dianne Feinstein 
was one of the most amazing people. It was a she was probably a giant for the left because of, of her voting for their stupid policies. Whoever graced the Senate, whoever graced the country. She had so many amazing, wonderful qualities wrapped up in one incredible human being. Oh, I can't take she it. She was smart. I can't take it. She was strong. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry she's passed away, you know, but that's that's just too much. And here we go. They're uh, they're all reacting to the Senate, reacting to Diane Feinstein's death. Oh, we all refer to each other as my friend from whatever state it is. And this guy, Mitch McConnell. Yeah, he's a Republican. I don't care. I don't care if they're Republican, Democrat. Look at him. Now, look. Some people can be just sharp as a whip, even their 80s, 90s, sharp as a whip. Problem is, is having 30 years in politics, <clears throat> keep getting reelected, reelected, reelected. Hey, that's California. That's on them. Kentucky, same. You keep, you keep reelecting these people, but we need... We need, we need a bill. Actually, we need a bill on this one. We don't need a bill to build a wall on the border, but we definitely need a bill or some kind of policy passed to, to stop these people from making a career in politics. It's just ridiculous. A longtime senator from California was elected in 1992 after serving as the first woman mayor of San Francisco. In the last few months, she faced calls to step down amid concerns over her declining health. And she didn't. She didn't step down. So it's kind of like the Biden situation. We know he ain't not doing nothing. We, we understand. Who was, who was pulling the strings here when she should have stepped down? And who, who was signing the laws and signing the bills? Mm-hmm. Inquiring minds want to know. Dan Ashley from our San Francisco station has a look at her life and legacy. Her career was marked by many firsts. Senator Dianne Feinstein was the first woman president of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors, the first woman mayor of San Francisco, and one of two women first elected to the U.S. Senate. Yay, she was the first woman. Look at look at San Francisco today. And this woman has been a part of California in government for 30 years. From California. Diane Feinstein, uh, right from the start. Oh, my God. There's another one. I think she says she ain't, she's not going to. I could be wrong about that if she's going to run again for but Pete's sake. California, stop electing these people. Was an icon for women in politics. She's a legend. A legend Chuck in Hugh California Schumer. as the first woman senator. A legend in this Senate. She, she was the leader on so many different issues. <laughs> she championed our libtard causes. I'm going to sing her praises all day long. Feinstein was born Diane Goldman in San Francisco on June 22, 1933. Her mother was Russian Orthodox, father Jewish. She worshipped at Temple Emanuel Synagogue and graduated from a Roman Catholic girls' high school. That school was San Francisco's Convent of the Sacred Heart. There, Feinstein was in the glee club, ballet, camera club, and athletics. She went on to study at Stanford University, where she graduated in 1955. Feinstein was married three times. She had her only daughter, Catherine, with her first husband, who she divorced after three years. In 1962, she married her second husband, Bertram Feinstein, who died in 1978 of colon cancer, just months before Feinstein became San Francisco mayor. In 1980, Feinstein married her third husband, investment banker Richard Blum. She remained with him until his death from cancer in 2022. Feinstein's first foray into politics came in 1960, when then-Governor Pat Brown appointed her to the California Women's Parole Board. 
But it was in 1969, at the age of 35, that Feinstein first held public office, winning a seat on the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. Former San Francisco Mayor Willie Brown was in the state assembly at the time. He recalled meeting Feinstein during those years. I remember that I was trying to get a house here in San Francisco when they wouldn't allow black people easily to get houses. And there was a demonstration, and this angular, tall, great-looking white woman pushing a baby stroller with a little kid in it whom nobody knew anything about came out to participate in the protest. That was Diane Feinstein. Mm -hmm. And that was that long ago. And so I am a great admirer. In the 1970s, while serving as the first female president of the Board of Supervisors, Feinstein ran twice for mayor, but lost. She had decided not to run again when tragedy struck the city. It's been seven hours now since that 38 caliber pistol went off nine times and took the lives of the two leaders. Both Mayor Moscone and Supervisor Harvey Milk have been shot and killed. The tragic assassination of San Francisco Mayor George Moscone by Supervisor Dan White in 1978 put Feinstein in the job. In 1979, Feinstein won her first full term as mayor and began reshaping the city. During the decade she served, she survived a recall attempt led mostly by detractors of her proposal to ban handguns in San Francisco. Oversaw the remaking of the city's skyline. There you go. They were trying to take your guns that long ago. Just because some nut goes and kills somebody now, we got to take your guns. We got to get them. You can't have them. Because, you know, you just can't. We know what's best. Line, which some decried as the Manhattanization of San Francisco, oversaw a raucous 1984 Democratic National Convention and saved the city's cable car system. The cable car is still running because of Diane. Feinstein rose to power as crisis gripped the city's gay community. A disease that would later be called AIDS killed thousands of gay men. Hoping to save lives, Feinstein ordered the city's bathhouses closed. A risky move considering the political power of the gay community at the time. Our this is your season to smile. With Health Department created the global standard for AIDS health care at San Francisco General Hospital. In 1990, Feinstein set her sights on a higher office, running for California governor. She lost to Republican Pete Wilson, but still made history again as the first woman in the state to win a major... He was uh, governor when I lived there. ...your party's gubernatorial nomination. Then in 1992, a turning point. During what was dubbed the Year of the Woman, Feinstein was elected to the U.S. Senate alongside Bay Area Congresswoman Barbara Boxer. I feel a little bit like I just got married. It was a, a very special ceremony to be in the chambers, to be in this room with the history. In Congress, Feinstein served as the first woman to chair the Senate Rules Committee and the Senate Intelligence Committee. She authored the 1994 federal assault weapons ban, leading to a 10-year restriction on certain semi-automatic weapons. The legislation was prompted by the 101 California Street shooting when a gunman opened fire at a law firm in San Francisco's financial district, killing eight people. I worked with Republicans and Democrats alike. Ten Republicans, along with 46 Democrats, vote, voted in favor of the amendment. Diane Feinstein is the only member of Congress, either on the congressional side or on the Senate side who's ever been able to get a control weapons ban signed into law. Diane got that. In 2014, Feinstein released a report revealing how the CIA was detaining and interrogating potential terrorists, sometimes torturing the suspects. The release of the report led to anti-torture legislation. This program was morally, legally, and administratively misguided and that this nation should never again engage in these tactics. Feinstein's legislative legacy also includes creating federal coordination of Amber Alerts, the National Child Abduction Warning System, passing the California Desert Protection Act, which protected millions of acres of California desert, and created the Death Valley and Joshua Tree National Parks. 
reauthorizing the Violence Against Women Act to protect women from domestic violence and sexual assault, and authoring the 2022 Respect for Marriage Act to enshrine marriage equality into federal law. Simply put, Americans should be free to marry the person they love regardless of sexual orientation or race. At times, Senator Feinstein faced criticism from some in her own party. Some of the worst came in 2018, after she initially declined to make public a letter from Bay Area Professor Christine Blasey Ford during the Supreme Court confirmation hearings for Justice Brett Kavanaugh. Ford had said Kavanaugh sexually assaulted her when they were in high school. Two years later, some Democrats also criticized Feinstein for appearing too cozy with Republicans during the confirmation hearings for conservative Supreme Court appointee Amy Coney Barrett. Still, throughout her career, Feinstein was seen as a trailblazer for women, someone who broke barriers, juggling being a wife and mother while navigating a career in the male-dominated field of politics. Dinah is unbelievable in terms of how she sets her mind into her program on doing something in a guest zone. In Feinstein's later years in office, concerns were raised about her mental fitness and ability to serve. She was the oldest sitting member of Congress. In late February of 2023, at age 89, she was hospitalized with shingles. That health scare coming the same month, Feinstein had announced she would retire from the U.S. Senate when her term was up in 2024. She told reporters it was time. You know, there are times for all things under the sun, and uh, I think that will be the right time. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said Feinstein Chuck cheered up when she told her Democratic colleagues about her decision. And she got a standing ovation that lasted minutes and minutes and minutes, one of the longest I've ever seen, which shows the love that our caucus and our country have. I mean, she had a, a career in politics. The question is, should she have? There, there needs to be term limits. There needs to be term limits. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry. Uh, peace be with her and her family in this tragic time. It's a sad thing. Um, you know, she's somebody's mom, somebody's grandma. I didn't like her politics, I'll admit it. But, you know, and uh, there's really not too much more I can... I'm not going to hammer this woman. But anyway... That's what's going on, and there you go.